Welcome back, everyone, to the LCS Challengers League. I am Mazel. I'm joined by Desrex. And again, the birthday boy himself, Beat Down Boulevard. I'm going to keep coming back to that one. Are we doing it again? Are we doing it again? No, no, no. Are you sure? I'm sure. Half, remember yeah. half-time bit? Remember, yeah. Gotta watch okay, out. Okay, Gotta yeah, watch yeah, out. Exactly, no, exactly. we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We got to talk about that first game of That's the series, true. though. AoE crushed Evil Genius' challenge. I think the boat at this point for AoE... Uh, they've got them some flex seal. They've talked to the right people. They've gotten the yep. right shipments, and uh, it's looking good. But it was the direction of Winnie and a lot of the strengths that we had talked about for AOE coming into a beatdown. That's right, and it, it came true. Like the activity we see from this team so often, that decisiveness was a big part of that early game. And we um, honestly, we got to point out the fact that again, Evil Geniuses let a lot of it happen. We didn't yeah. see very much activity from them early on and highlighted how important it was for them to get that. Even with ASOL, considering the draft they had as a whole, time was not on their side, and that proved true. Yeah, yeah you, you know, we're making the ship's analogy uh, with the flex seal and everything repairing. It, it, it felt like Evil Geniuses just watched the ship leave. Uh, stayed there. Didn't really uh, do anything. That they was, didn't even get it. They just, yeah, it's it, not ships in the night. It's just one ship leaving. The other ship staying there. <laughs> It's like well, you're. It's like you're. You're late for the 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 sail off, and you're just showing up with like a bag, and you're like, Wait, yeah. What? They they only made one attempt around the Rift Herald to make a play, and when that went awry, they mm. just never did anything else. Just shut after. it down. The A soul almost. I the damage was so like behind the scenes. It felt like in a lot of those fights where you were just watching health bars slowly tick down. Yeah. And yep. there were so many times when Ryoma is literally just standing in place for like 15 seconds trying to get spinning damage on down on the AOE spinning around. So. I love the kind of attempts that we saw in the later parts, but again, it was a little bit too little too late for EGC. Yeah, exactly. And we'll see what their bounce back is going to be like in game number two. But we do have that halftime bit you were alluding to, which is a game I like to call Two Truths and a Lie. I've chosen four players in this series. I've gotten three sentences for each one of those players. Now, there is one lie and two truths within those sentences, and you're going to have to tell me which ones are which. All right, you guys ready to go? I'm ready. Already? All right. First play is. Are we, are we is... competing? Before we do... Are we competing? <laughs> oh, yeah, if you want to. You know. All right. I don't have points. Eric, I don't have anything. You're going down, bro. Oh, ho, oh, oh. All right. Then them's fighting words. <laughs> <That's racist. laughs> <laughs> all right, right. All right. All right. First. Uh... <laughs> First guy we got here is going to be AOE's Skytech, who just came off a uh, pretty impressive game himself. Now, Skytech. He was an American football player. Uh, he also originally came into competitive on Western University, and he had spent time on an academy team previously. Uh, what do you think is the lie here? Do you think there's uh, anything that stands out? First, we're at first one to guess. Originally gets the points, came I guess. into competitive on Western University. I'm pretty sure that was not. Yeah, I, I I'm pretty sure that like, wasn't his first school. I, I feel like that first one is a bait. And I'm going to take okay, the bait. Okay. So, okay. Wasn't a big <laughs> all right. No, all right. The thing is, I know you're playing me, but you're right. Well, you got played, beat down, because you are wrong. And Deserex no! is correct, as Skytech was a hockey player, as he is from Canada. Uh, he does have a little bit of yeah, background, played some hockey. So, he also likes to hockey. watch hockey. Yeah. Uh, Skytech doesn't mean. look like a football player, at least. Maybe like, <laughs> maybe like football. I soccer, tried to go in, so then I was like, mm, no, you can just see him play football. High school, <laughs> You'd be surprised the people they like. True, true, true. All right, all right. Well, we got the first lie out of the way. He did originally come into competitive on Western University, Damn, uh, and he had spent time on an academy team previously. He was G promoted to EG from EG yes, Prodigies to EGA in spring 2022. So, uh, great stuff. And uh, one point to Desert. Uh, so right next now. up, we got Evil Genius's Shaden coming out here. Uh, now we're going to start off with this one as he was born outside of the United States. Uh, he went straight into Cloud9 Academy like a rocket, his first competitive experience. And he has uh, his most played champion being Viego in totality for his competitive career. Now, which one of these is the second. lie? Second. Which one's like, okay? All right. In the second what, you, one. what you got be done? Any thoughts? Any thoughts? Hmm. Hmm. What could what it be? What is it, first one? Ooh. BDB. He's born in the Philippines. Oh, Let me know no. right now. I'm sorry. Yes, he is born in the Philippines. Uh, hey, you you're spoiled wrong. it, Eric. You're, Surely you're wrong, he loses you're points right, for you're that. You're wrong, beat down. He spoiled uh, your reveal. Now, he did not 
Go straight into Cloud9 Academy. <laughs> His first competitive start was, was on Noble cool. Esports with Meech and JoJo. Which turned as, uh, into the EGP turned... follow-up. Exactly. And then he also went into oh, AoE it. Cope afterwards with Concept uh, before Cloud9 Academy. So a little bit of track record there for Shaden. Uh, his most played champion is... Uh, Viego, he has almost a 5 KDA on the champ with his most played. So, and yeah. again, like you said, he was born in the Philippines. So, beat down, you're you're, you're oh, oh, oh and two man. We're coming back, we're coming back. What to say. We'll, we'll see if you got the come. I don't have extra points for you, so I don't know how you're coming yeah. back. <laughs> no, I'm just checking. Uh, maybe just I'll checking. kill this. All right, right, all right. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Next up, we got AOE Whitney. Of course, you got to put the focus on this guy. Now he did start competitive also on a Western University squad. He also spent time in Academy, so some likeness there. But his most played champion is none other than Sejuani from the Frail Yours. Most played Which champion Sejuani is the lie. Be the, oh, oh my god. Oh, 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 I had to say it before oh, Eric. Oh, before uh, he's just like me. It's me. I'm it's sorry. me. Yeah, yeah, I know the answer. I know, I know. <laughs> Death strikes. Give me any no. of them. I'll take the second one. <laughs> You're just going to take the one. <laughs> what I've already, I already lost the point. Oh here, my god. All right, all right, all right. Well, you are correct, Beat Dad. His most played Woo! champion is the Let's Olaf. Uh, I'm coming did. for you, Eric. <laughs> there you go. You're on the comeback now. Uh, exactly what uh, EGC are going to be like in the second game, right? It's all working out. Exactly. Uh, he did spend time in Academy. He was on TSM Academy way back when. Uh, he also is a double duty player in terms of the collegiate atmosphere as well as or the semi pro atmosphere plus. Uh, plus the challenger. So it's interesting and nearly enough to see this guy with such a headstrong attitude being such a crucial part of this team. But now we got to move on to our last player. Somebody that maybe uh, is a little bit less known, but it is Evil Genius's challenger's mobility. Uh, now he has been in competitive for over two years. He's you know he, he's been a little bit under the radar, but he's been he's been hanging out just fine. Now he did start as a substitute while waiting for King for Evil Genius's challengers, uh, but you know is uh, here in the full starting spot now. So we'll see uh, if that is true or not. Right. <laughs> He's still waiting on a sub. And he has four wins on Jin, my favorite champion. So I had to include that one. Now, which one of those is the lie? Number one's the lie. Uh, I, I, I think that last one's a bait. You're trying to get me in. I'm not taking the bait this time. One for number one. All right, I mean, all right. I, I can't go for that, so I, I'm gonna go for the bait. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna go for the bait. Well, the bait I was a bait because uh, yeah. he does actually have four wins on Jin, and I just—it's like his his uh, what was it? Hold on, second most played champion I had on him, uh, but he has four wins. It's not a great uh, win percentage. I'll just say that. Uh, but you know, it's four, so that's all that really matters. Uh, he also is obviously the starting ADC for Evil Geniuses Challengers throughout this whole split. It's been really awesome to watch him grow alongside Smoothie as well. But the lie was that he literally just started competitive like last March yeah. <laughs> on Team yeah. Ambition. Yeah, so only he's uh, a little bit new to the new to the scene, but it is nice to have a little bit of a spotlight on a guy who has kind of at this point earned that position now as well. I, I knew him as a Winthrop sub. Uh, I've looked yep. into him oh, well before funny. NACL just because of my Winthrop fanness. But yeah, that's that's the one I got. Throps out, throps out. Uh, but that is our game. That's two truths and a lie for you today. So now let's hone back in on what evil geniuses can do to pull a comeback. Right, that shit. Find some flex seal of their own here, Desirex. And especially try to get this game two under wraps. Get in the boat! Get in the boat, in the start boat. sailing, let's get move, the boat, let's make get the going. Happen. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they had moments where they were stronger in the early phases, and yeah, they blundered it, but still try and set up another play. And, you know, part of that does play to Winnie. Winnie's incredibly intelligent in pathing and was able to read a lot of what Shaden was trying to do. But you shouldn't still have a lack of trying into that regard. We, we got to see early plays being established by Evil Geniuses, not coming late when you have already, like, an AK lead from AoE. Yeah, what about you, Be Down? What do you got? Get on the ship. Get, that's it. <laughs> Just Literally, get on the that's ship. it. Do you want to still see kind of some late game aspects, uh, some scaling? The A soul yeah, it was I coming mean, to fruition, just not early enough. It was. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you, things like. There are just so many late game scaling picks that everyone's opting into when it comes to meta. So we're going to see that. But at the end of the day, if you have a comp that needs you to be active early game, please play it. And if you have a comp where you don't need to be active, hey, that's fine. You can chill back on the boat, straw in your mouth, hat over your face while taking a nap. Oh, did 40 Chilling. minutes? Okay, time to win the game. All righty, guys. Well, we're going to find out who has this last game under wraps and whose ship will end up sinking at the end of the day. This is AoE's last game of the regular season. Let's see how they do against Evil Geniuses Challengers. Guys, take it away.
I will take it away this time. You're That's not putting right. me into that trap again. <laughs> you acting like it wasn't your idea, this guy. Uh, okay, okay, fair enough. You can call me out on that, but I regret it nonetheless, and I will stand by that. <laughs> oh, you were fine. Into this next draft now, what are expectations on our jungle matchup? I, I was saying I want Shaden to play more towards that carry role. One of the reasons they can't is these were the same two first bans AoE did last game, which was ban away the Kindred, ban away the Viego. Those were double digit kills that he got uh, during that binge that he had on uh, five games in a row. What is left that has that level of carry potential beat? Technically Graves. I'm not the biggest fan of him though in the current meta, but he he has made it work. One of the things we pray shaded. <laughs> Whatever, man. Stop watching the stream. I yeah, know, we, I know a, you're watching. <laughs> so uh, I, I think they did this in game one too, honestly. Well, I don't know. Like that was your turn to break it down, so I wasn't quite quite looking. So point is, not many carry options available for Shaden. I'm like thinking, so it's probably just gonna end up being like he actually has an opportunity to take away Sejuani. Because he has played it, has looked good. Maybe pick Will it. He? AoE, first pick for them is going to be the Gragas. That's Sejuani still up. Zaya, first pick, okay. Going to be a good one for mobility. You've already heavily targeted that bot lane uh, with Sage. the Ashcade and Senna Sage. bans away. I, I think the Senna is the more significant one because it kind of stops the shenanigans with that Cho'Gath being in the bot. But now we got the lovers to top. Duel. Yeah, yeah, we can put it top up there. But at say. least it takes it away from the bot. That's what I'm saying. Fair, fair enough. So now you have a... At least ideally, you have a bit of an easier time kind of having uh, a dominating matchup unless we see something more on the double range side. But so many of those uh, kinds of picks are taken out of the picture. I mean, Ash is gone. Caitlyn is gone. We could see Zeri Lulu come through, but you imagine that one of those things is going to get taken away because now we're on three. You can only pick one of those things because AoE early picked the uh, Jace, probably because they were afraid it was going to get taken out of the picture. Okay, so it's going to be Varus. Varus locked in. What does this Set. mean right now on the side of AoE? I mean, Chain of Corruptions, it's a lot of zone control, but that zone control is being matched already with just uh, that Sejuani getting locked in. Uh, something that can be flexed over to Soul as well. Soul has been uh, historically a little bit more of a tank player on top of that Gwen play that we always uh, compliment Soul for. So some flexibility for EGC as they head into the second phase. All right, this is better. This is better overall. I like the draft so far from EGC. AoE on their side. So we, we, we're not 100% on where a lot of this stuff is going. We know Gamsu can play Gragas. We know Winnie can play Gragas. Maybe Dark Wings can play Gragas. The best thing, uh, the next thing I'm really looking towards is that support matchup. What's Skytech going to be playing? You can play ranged. You can play something with engage. So you can go for these all ins. I mean, Nautilus is fine. Leona, you guys remember Leona? She's really cool. Play her. Maybe Thresh. Thresh is good. We haven't seen it today, but Thresh is great on this patch. So that's something else to be looking towards as well. If far as Thresh, good matchup. That's kind of what I'm thinking towards because they need more CC. They need more ways to, to, to get in these fights. I want to see a Thresh. I, I, I've I been excited ever since I started uh, seeing Thresh getting picked again. I, it was Joey was picking a lot of Thresh yesterday and looked like an absolute god on that he was champion, Chad. man. He was a he was giga Chad. Chad on that. We'll see if uh, Thresh gets uh, picked by either of these teams. It'd be AoE who would grab it as support's already locked in for EGC. Final band comes in, gonna be over into the mid lane Ooh. with that Sintra. So, oh, into the mid lane we go. Uh, Yone locked in, most likely for Rayama. Yeah, that just really like adds to this all in potential that you have right now. Yo. Don't do me like that, Winnie. Are you gonna play it? Just hold it. Let's hold it. Man. Yeah. Don't fall for it, man. Don't fall for man. it. Yeah, I know. Try but and get like, us every time. I, Lee Sin is also good, and I like Lee Sin. Whatever. Yeah, Point instead is, you get Lee Sandra. <laughs> you know what? Close enough. Uh, I, I guess I have to take that. I don't have a choice. And now the support thing. So you have a good amount of engage. Darkwings actually has the opportunity to set up with the E, going in with the claw, everything along those lines. But I'm not confident with the front line yet. For AoE side, oh. they need something a little beefier. Hey, you know what's up? Um, what's his name? Void his champion? Name? No! Why did you pick side? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? What the f is that? We've been talking. Nah, man, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. And then Chogat just makes it through another draft. Whatever, man. 
I don't even I, care anymore. There's so many people who believe so heavily within Cho'Gath being just the bigger priority pick. For good reason, man. Cho'Gath wins games. Cho'Gath just outright wins games, and there's not much you can really do about it, but uh -huh. such a weird, weird flex coming in for AoE to just go back to that Scion, but, Speaking you know. Of flex. It's, it's old habits, man. It's old habits. What you got? Uh, Soul is playing Yone top, which is kind of hype. Oh. Yes, because now that's a lane. You have to push in, lane you can play for. And when we get to level six around Herald time, Evil Geniuses once again will have the opportunity to be able to fight for that early objective. The question is, are they actually going to uh, use the early game power that they have? Because they definitely have some to be playing for here. Again, now Shaden is on the Sejuani, has I mean, just as much ability to make plays, but maybe a little more because of the Arctic Assault. Use it. Please. please, please, especially early. Don't let this game fall by the wayside. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I wanted to pull up a stat real quick. I was curious if uh, Souls played this champion yet, played Yoni yet. No, it's going to be oh. the first time on the season that he's going to be pulling this out. Uh, most played, for those wondering, would be Nar, Sejuani, and Cassante for Souls. Is the first Yone top we've seen this split? I'm not entirely sure. I feel like... I put money on that, honestly. I mean, we don't got Vital anymore, so... <laughs> exactly. I loved his Yone top. Yeah, and I mean, I mean Yone Top was super prevalent last summer as well. But uh, but either way, Soul, bring it out, going deep into the champ pool. Bring out something a little special here to get EGC back into the game. And overall, oh, wait a minute. It's Lissandra Support. I just took that in. Lissandra Support? You know what? You know what? Whoa. We're late on this, but we could talk about it. Because Skytech's actually the guy who plays the craziest thing, Support. Yep. He, pl he plays Vi support before, and that was awesome. So now he's playing the Lissandra. You see the Glacial augments. So when he goes in with the claw, goes for the roots. I mean, you, um, oh my God, I just realized it. It isn't even just about that. Smoothie goes in, Skytech can root him. All right, here we go. Walking like into that. the brush, double root, gonna be found. And uh, yeah, this game just got so much more exciting for you, B. I feel like you're catching up to every little minuscule thing that we kind of missed out on. Yeah. I'm kind of taken aback by Lissandra's support. I remember when Lissandra first came out, she was kind of on the weaker side. And there was a Korean team, I, I forget which one, that decided to play her in support role first before she really got established as uh, a mid laner. But look at this invade coming out for Soul, Trying to uh, be a little bit of a menace right now. Gets knocked up by the uh, Decimating Smash. Will not stop Winnie from getting his blue buff. Oh, so awesome, Lash. But Soul, oh man. Yep. Yeah. So, this is interesting because I actually had this conversation with Soul specifically not too long ago where top, we joke about, well, I mean, we also say the top is uh, not that impactful of a role at the moment considering the meta. Soul has said to me, like verbatim, that top is at a point where you could literally, you're more valuable messing with your enemy jungler's first start than uh, actually it's like winning lane and things like that. So Saul being the one who said that goes in, messes with Winnie's early clear. Even though they forced the flash from Saul, the fact is like they wasted a lot of Winnie's oh. time. And now Shaden looking for early plays on the Sejuani. Oh, and keep in mind, Sejuani and melee champions sync up so beautifully together. And that's exactly the case here. Soul will get first blood. It's that perfect setup. I mean, you're level three because of that early stop coming through from Soul on the top side. It sets it up perfectly. And uh, we get a tweet from Alk Battery. So I made some food listening to NACL from the other room. Why is Skytech playing Lissandra? Uh, Skytech is just like that. That's just all that's that the only guy. answer. He's just that guy. He's him. Uh, Lissandra, I mean, it can work, theoretically. Uh, I like it. Uh, as good. you're saying, you dash in, Smoothie gets stopped by uh, Skytech, uh, putting in the root there. But more importantly, it's an engaged tool for AoE, Yeah. Uh, even if not the most uh, orthodox one. Right, I mean, you have... The thing is, that I really like about it, that... Okay, nothing's gonna happen. What I particularly like about it. Oh, never mind. I wanna know, B. I wanna know. I wanna, I wanna know too. Keeping you Shaden, on the edge of your seat. Shaden doesn't want us to know the way he's going in and out like that. So, the interesting thing about Skytex going for a pick like this is that EG have a lot of all in. So, Lissandra, of course, you can go in with the claw, you can set up plays and roots and everything like that, but. Pretty good at anti-dive as well. So if everybody is clumping up, you got a death ball. That's a lot of people Skytech can lock up in these team fights as well. So I'm yeah. very interested. 
I'm, I'd rather, it's very important for him to be able to pile this champ that way. And I have to imagine that's the idea when he locked it in. And there's always good value on point and click CC. Uh, very easy to just click your enemy, have the enemy marksman be stuck for a little bit. As you can see right there, uh, oh. even the W providing a bit of that. And this aggression is working out. Wants to land the arrow, forces out the flash of Smoothie. But we are not done because Winnie is eyeballing this lane beat. Right, and I mean, you see the advantages coming through. Oh, man. I oh. mean, oh, keep it. They split them up. Mobility. Oh. Mobility's gonna die. Once this wave crashes right in the tower, this is a tower dive, and Smoothie can only watch at this point. There is a flash available for mobility, but it's not going to provide enough distance. Another kill for AoE in the bot lane. Really nicely done. Nice and clean from AoE. Managing to get something back on their side as well. Making full use of that Lissandra. I mean, it's double range. You're getting so much poke into mobility and smoothie and you're chunking them setting them up for these dives skytech already showing the value of this lissandra pick and it only yeah. goes up from here you even see that commencing stopwatch Una stopwatch will be available as well and we're gonna see some crazy plays come through from skytech and it's making you think a little bit more uh if you're in mobility shoes right you have to worry about lissandra that can be in your face at any given moment you have to worry about a little bit of the zone control that comes out from links just inherently from a varus kit and as you see right there it's a little bit too much to worry about they lose out of those exchanges in the bottom lane results in mobility going down and aoe having a place to play from it's a very interesting unorthodox pick but so far so good for skytech that's right, and it's gotten them a lot of lane advantages so far. It's gotten mobility and smoothie in an, uh, a bit of a tight situation. Like Now you see Winnie pathing his way bot side. There's just another opportunity, especially with the wave being where it is for Winnie to make the play. But look who's also in the area, Shaden. Said we needed him to do a little bit of anticipating. Anticipatory jungle pathing, and look what he does. He's in the area, making sure Winnie hey. can't make the play. Winnie's anticipating it as well. Reads out the pathing for Shaden and follows him through, which means Shaden can't do anything about that bottom lane play. So they'll transfer that priority that they had in the bottom lane to just set up for Dragon. Right, and you let this Dragon go as AoE. It's fine. You, they, oh, well, actually, I say this, but they, they want this Dragon. There's a better pinch coming out from Ryoma if they want to push into that uh, engage for AoE. But it, it, it still is uh, very dangerous. Ryoma will have the uh, Frozen Prison before... Frozen Tomb before uh, Skytech's oh, wow. able to get it. Skytech's still going to go in. Kill comes out by Darkwings. We'll be able to grab it. Slams onto Smoothie, who slides away. Skytech's still low, but here comes Ryoma. Roots down onto Skytech and will take him down. Evil Genius is still looking to clean up the rest, but Winnie has secured the Drake. Now might look to secure the fight. Flash away from Lynx, and that is the call for retreat for AoE. And this is that decisiveness we keep talking about. You think they can't go for something, but they won't hesitate if they see an angle. And we're seeing that Lissandra come oh. through clutch. Oh. Mobility, nice with the feathers right there. We'll utilize the passive to get that extended range to get the damage in. Dark Wings returns one through, but Soul is here to make sure it's all roses for EGC. So this is a much more active early game and a much better look for Evil Geniuses. I mean, props to AoE. They're still looking for these angles. It looks tough, too, because you see Dark Wings is split off, is afraid of getting turned on, and as soon as the Frozen Tomb is gone, I'm thinking AoE aren't going to go in. But again, how this team has won so many games you do not expect them to is because they are not afraid to go for plays like this. They end up going even when all said and done, but they secure the dragon, so they get the objective that they are looking for, and they trade some gold back and forth. Yeah, Winnie had eyes on the prize for that Drake. The rest of AoE secure it. But this is where I feel so bad for Lynx. Mobility ah, utilizing the leave, passive bro. right here. Look at that extra range. I don't feel bad. That's mm. just that's just silliness. You gotta play your life better than that, and he gets punished for it. At least it, Dark Wings is able to get something back, but that ends up being... I mean, we just got kills going back and forth. The idea is you walk away with the Drake, and ultimately, you're even in gold. AoE, they're happy with that. Feeling good right now, as we do have a more competitive match. Gold going to be on the even side as we head into the ninth minute of the game. Uh, focusing over towards the Rift Herald is Winnie. Get some attention over there. Has some vision control over there, but the control board placed by Soul to try and spot this out. Shaden not too far off. 
Knight breaks out over in the mid lane as uh, AoE start to allocate those resources to this top side to make sure that Rift Herald will be secured. Right, and we talked about Soul and what he did level one. Setting Winnie behind in his early clear and his early playmaking, it's gotten him to a point where he's now two and zero and able to really hard pressure this top side, but it hasn't turned into a Herald yet. It's got a lead is here for this Yone. And we need to see where that actually comes into value. Oh, no. Ooh, ultimate coming out from Shaden as they catch out Skytech and Lynx. But Shaden is taking way too much what? punishment. A parting gift from Lynx. It's going to be a piercing arrow. And thanks for your time, buddy. Lynx says on the fadeaway, really nicely done. They get the red buff. But at what cost, Lennon? They keep finding things, especially this bot lane. Whether it's the normal stuff or unorthodox plays, they have been a staple. For this bot late, uh, for this team rather in AOE. Lynx and Skytech doing their best. They're gonna need to bring a bit more because they got more fights to deal with. Here comes Skytech trying to get away from the oh, Featherstorm. Nice. Will use the Frozen Tomb on himself, chasing on a mobility. Mobility does have flash though. Shade in the back pocket. Darkwing's not too far off. Shock Blast goes out oh, and oh. decimated his mobility. My word, that was brutal. Smoothie walking away from AoE, but they got what they wanted, and that is mobility. Oh, They'll oh. find a buy one, get one free in the bottom lane. Links, the provisional sniper, finds another one off the piercing arrow. And again, AoE, they just keep looking for plays, and they are not afraid even when they're falling behind. And I'll tell you what, Lennon, or Lennon, excuse me, Eric, they oh. are not behind now. I've been casting with Lennon a lot lately. I'm sorry. It's all right, animals. <laughs> LPL, I cast that. Okay, <laughs> back into the replay. Look at how mobility gets bodied right here, man. Yeah, it's it's the great exploding cask that really gets it all done. And that stopwatch for Skytech, like we were talking about earlier, from the rune, was so huge. And like, even if you don't get this kill, who cares? Huge winning play for AoE. But the fact that you do get this kill, my god, it's just extra gold in your pocket. And AoE find themselves at a 2k gold lead because of it. They are set up for another dragon that's coming up in 40 seconds. And despite Shaden's attempts from what we're seeing to pick up this scuttle crowd, like at the end of the day, vision's not really there for you. And you're at a point where members of AoE are starting to spike. You see first item or Lynx in a really strong spot now. Darkwings is really close to it. You got to imagine as well. It just means that you're not in a position to really oh. fight for this uh, dragon. Dragon spawns in 10 seconds. AoE on this bottom side have so much presence, so much priority. Uh, it's the opposite for EGC in the mid lane. That's where they set their priority to set up for the Drake, but puts both teams on opposite sides. Mobility trying to catch this wave that's going to crash over in this bottom end. The rest of AoE waiting for someone to walk into this trap bush. Oh, it's brutal. You have very little vision. Besides the scuttle crab and that zombie ward, and I mean you're about to lose the ladder. Oh, nice oh Ryoma, frozen prison puts it onto Dark Wings, teed up and punt it away. Will not uh, continue think? to get the kill there, but it's a lot of pressure. Half health Dark Wings before the dragon spawns. Yeah, that's a really good all in for Ryoma. It's gonna make it easier for the rest of EG to move to this bot side. Now it's Winnie playing interference, hoping to oh. buy time for gold to come through here for Lynx, but he's actually not in range because they have to respect. The move for the rest of EG. Skytech oh. Frozen 2, able to land it on the Raconic Explosive Cask. It's a Wombo combo, and it looked oh so clean for AoE. They'll follow it up with kill on Shaden. Feathers fly for mobility. We'll return a kill and get a shutdown on the Zaya. It's right, still, this is AoE. Not afraid to pull the trigger. They know exactly what they want to be doing, and that decisiveness, again, it gives them a reward. More kills, the second Drake. And firm control here of game to AoE, who we thought were struggling, questioning whether or not they would be able to right the ship, so to speak, are looking like, at least from this early game, that we got a 2-0 coming. Oh, Mobility going for the fancy footwork, puts out the ultimate oh. one more auto! Mobility wins these, man! We'll get the trade. It is definitely going to be a trade. Winnie's not too far off. We'll get the body slam. Did have to burn the flash as well, but Mobility had a fancy play there. Ryoma wants a challenge. We'll hop on to Winnie. Doesn't get the root onto Winnie. We'll get the explosive cast on it right from him. Oh, does not get the final auto, but Smoothie <laughs> is there for the dubstep ignite. 
that's something that they managed to get back. We're seeing soul pressure topside. Oh, Ooh. wow. Oh, soul. So fancy right there. Sends Gomsu back to the respawn at a time where Shaden's pressuring over towards his topside. Right, and that Olin is so important because now Gomsu's under a lot of threat. You just saw Winnie go down. So much went on the other side of the map. Oh, but Gomsu. Ever the rock finds his way out. Yeah, dinner bell rang. It's not over in top lane. It's on the respawn. I'm going to go uh, get something to eat, get some snacks. I'll be back, Soul, and we'll continue this 1v1. It's personal right now with uh, <laughs> how things went in game number one. And uh, with that back, getting tankier is this Scion. And we know what a Scion can do. Still, scales as a tank does bring a great amount of zone control and, honestly, a good amount of damage as well. Right, and that's the big thing here. You have that frontline... I was hoping for in draft. It wasn't the champion I was hoping for, but you know, it's fine. Gamsu, good player, is able to make use of this tank. And uh, here's a perfect example of that. Oh, Soul. Yeah, Soul's going to be caught out now, but oh, gets a lot of damage on the Winnie. Going to try and trade this before he goes down, but there's the frozen prison. With that, Winnie gets a shutdown. Nice and easy. Shaden will take this time to invade. And I like what EGC have done. You can see they've set up much better vision on this bottom side of the map. Maintaining control here for these next three minutes is so important. Because you have a comp, even with frontline, like AoE have, Mountain Soul is a big deal for this composition. So if they get that soul point, they'll find themselves on the side of AoE. Very powerful position there because of how much stronger they are, how much they've been out team fighting EGC at every front. So I like the focus from EGC on this bottom side. E we worked through some of my issues, uh, through some of your issues, uh, calling me one in and all. We worked through some of mine. Frozen Tomb and Glacial Prison are the two things I keep mixing up. Not just oh. mixing up, but mixing up the words as well. I've called it like the uh, Glacial Tomb, Frozen, Frozen Prison. Prison. There's I Glacial Fisher as well. Anything. Oh, that's right. I, I was going to let it go, but yeah, it is uh, the Frozen Tomb or uh, Sky Tech. Say Ice Crowd Control. Ice crowd could ah uh, yeah that narrows Frosty it down. CC. There's only one of those. Not like there are nine champions. Probably I just threw out nine. You're probably right. Anivia, Ash. We got a lot of uh, Freljord champions. Yeah, Freljord, very cool. I watched a lore video about that the other day. Orn made the Freljord apparently. I don't remember how, but it was really goofy. But you know, when you're a god, <laughs> the goofy things you do have like real life consequences, you know? Oh, okay, I got I got another one real quick. Hit me. Um so apparently Fizz's spear is actually Orn's fork. And he just threw as far as he is could. Is that lore? Is that lore accurate? I saw a video about it. Maybe I got baited, but like I just watched that I'm like, whoa. Nah, I, I wanna That's believe crazy. you. I wanna believe you. I don't care. I appreciate you. <laughs> Orn's fork. That's amazing. That's uh you know, he, he is a blacksmith, right? So that's probably a top quality fork and Fizz is exactly. a top quality assassin when he is uh. in the meta. Or at least if we get someone like Nuke Duck to play him. Yeah, true. But now uh, as we kind of invest back into this game, we got a minute before the next dragon to spawn. Mm -hmm. It's AoE who have control over the river at the time being, transferring yeah. that to the mid lane because they have a Rift Herald, they want to crash it. Right, and you can see on the bottom side, it was littered with red wards just a minute ago when we were talking about it, Eric, and now it's gone. This mid turret is out of the picture. They got to answer this Herald and walk through bottom. You have Ryoma pushing this bottom wave, giving that option for him to get a uh, close by and set up a flank. But ultimately, the angle isn't really there for Evil Geniuses. And they lost <laughs> all the control they have bottom side. Now oh, I like that. Uh, they put out the sweeper, says, uh, well, if you're not going to come to us, we'll come to you. Shaden goes down in a heartbeat. Ryoma shows up. As the frozen tomb, I've said hey. it right this time, but AoE will trade out and uh, take the jungler for nothing. Yeah, now things are slow. EG actually get the position on the bottom side, which is good for them, but they don't have a jungler. So, actually, they don't have the numbers either. Soul is looking to TP mid to make it happen. It's still a five versus four. Uh -oh. AoE very much favored uh -oh. here, but EG are committing. Uh oh, big boy here. Gamsu, it's near playoffs. You got to stay away from him. He's too dangerous, man. He knows how to hold the line. He knows how to hold the door. This ramp, walking down, evil geniuses will try their luck from all different angles. Oh, Soul has know. a great setup no right idea. here. Soul has a great setup. Can he now find links? Oh, 
is going to be spotted out. Did walk over a ward. Skytech into that direction. Soul's going to chase him down. Now the dragon being contested is oh, going to be secured stolen. over by the side of Ryoma. But a kill goes down. First one to fall is going to be Winnie. Shut down. Going to be secured. Dinner bell rung. Gamsu gets out of there. And what a trade coming through. Evil Geniuses in the shutdown on the back half of it. But Soul is not done. Wants to take down Gamsu. I said it's personal, man. I said it's personal, and Soul needs to take down the old guard if he wants to find himself in the new one. Will not be able to get it. Sends it over Ryoma, who is the old guard. <laughs> nice play coming through from Evil Geniuses. Not only do they secure the kills, they steal the dragon, which is crazy. Winnie misses the smite, crucially. And now you get those extra resistances from these individual drakes that are so strong, and you slow the dragon stacking. And the big thing to watch here is again, the vision control is really good. Soul making good use of the mountain rift using that wall to hide himself for the most part. But the big thing there, you hear the smite, it doesn't go through, and it's an easy steal for Ryoma. And there, there's a world where Soul gets a three man ultimate, was in close to a position for that and that could have been absolutely immaculate even more for uh, evil geniuses to get this game to swing around but not too bad right now with uh, picking up what they got not at all they've evened up the gold lead as you can see from the top side and now Ryoma is actually huge didn't go for I mean anything you'd expect as a second Whoa. item oh wait a minute yeah keep in mind soul's been farming soul got two kills very early on so when he's got to respect soul the other thing you gotta keep in mind is Ryoma has a death cat as his second item. Like literally on the mind. You literally strong. keep it on the mind. Yeah. That's right. He's got the the funny kill hat, as uh, others might call it. And you can see it, he's really funny strong at the hat. moment. Yeah, you know, death cap, kill hat, same thing. We're unhinged uh, today, B. <laughs> I know, it's good. Uh Ryo Ry uh Ryoma, excuse me. Just got that Roa fully stacked as well. So that's fully online. Evil geniuses are actually in a really good position right now because one, they don't have to worry about Dragon Soul. Two, their big carries are online. Like mobility is caught up. Ryoma is strong as all hell. And Soul has maintained a consistent lead topside. Even though you see AoE ahead by a couple hundred gold, this and that, it's fine. EGC actually favor them right now. Ultimate from Shaden goes wide, gets the flash out of Lynx. So AOE going to be down a summoner for this next exchange. Yeah, this is uh, this is working out well for Evil Geniuses thus far. As they get later and later into this, you were talking about uh, Ryoma hitting those critical points. Well, it's Ryoma on Silas alongside that. Ooh, ultimate going to be burned away, denied. Soul pops in one of his own, but there's the explosive cast. Soul has to go back, but it's into the wandering arms of Winnie. Really nice catch out. From AoE, Soul getting punished. It will give an opening for the mid-tier one to go down, and that's huge for Evil Geniuses, so they can have an easier time pushing these waves and setting up vision. But, oh, this is what I mean about AoE and decisiveness. They just Ooh. start the Baron, where they're like, okay, forget it. We have a man advantage. Like, let's do it right now. No hesit. Ryoma can teleport in, even though he's in that bottom lane, gets the tower. That's going to be a trade up so far coming out for EGC. Teleport channeled. Ryoma is here, and AoE are starting to flinch. Here comes Skytech, able to lock it down on the shade, and ultimate goes wide for Ryoma. It's going to be a lot lost, Smoothie. but so much more found by Smoothie. Evil geniuses will take it right back to AoE. A double kill picked up for mobility, and Soul is not done. We'll send one more over towards Winnie. Gets punted away, still goes forward with the chase, but evil geniuses win the team fight. Unreal! That was four versus five. Remember, Soul wasn't even there. Of course, the Phantom Fifth Man being the Baron, doing so much damage to AoE side as well. EGC are pulling it back here in game two. Now they are up 2,000 gold. Now Ryoma is 4-0-3, and, and you'll see it. The decisiveness, it wins AoE games and it loses them games. Right now, Shaden had a really good stopwatch, and Ryoma is just unstoppable at this point. And the fact is, you can't touch Mobility, you can't touch Ryoma, you can't win these fights then. And Smoothie, oh my word. I, I want you to keep in mind, at the start of that fight, Ryoma right. with the explosive cast, Shaden was caught out. It wasn't looking that good for EGC. Even Mobility had to burn his ultimate early, but Smoothie turns that around outright, and now still looking to continue the momentum. 
is Evil Genius's prodigy. He's pulled back by the explosive cast. Shaden takes a lot of damage, but here we go. Ryama jumps in, and so does Soul. Caught by the frozen tomb, locked down and slain. Evil Geniuses, they're trying to fight, but the back line of AoE is unchecked thus far. The front line does fall, and now Evil Geniuses might look to take it, but four versus three is what remains. And that's so big. Evil Geniuses get another dragon. They stack these mountain dragons, making them even tankier. Harder to take down in these fights. AoE, yes, they have frontline, but they have range. They have poke. They don't want to get close up in your face. They want to whittle you down from afar. And as more mountain drakes come through and as more gold EGC gets, it gets that much harder to get it done. You can see it. Shaden Smoothie turning up in game two, finding these angles. And Rayoma, of course putting in so much damage before not even going down. Like, it's just much better team fighting for EGC, and you'll see what happens when you get close to AoE. You can see Shaden just playing this facilitator for his carries for both Ryoma and Mobility, putting his full on trust into them, as well as Smoothie, who's engaging alongside him. And we're seeing a picture of Evil Geniuses we don't see that often, where they're able to play a lot more through their mid and their bot lane, but it's working oh so well for Evil Geniuses as they're styling in a lot of these fights. I do want to give credit to Mobility. His positioning in the last two fights has been immaculate. And in Zaya is a champion where he's had a lot of his success. That turnaround when she started to become a more popular picture. I mean, there's a player. Started out in competitive last March, like we were talking about during the halftime show, Eric. And look at him now. <laughs> a sub, struggling to keep up in the early weeks, but now an NACL AD carry is of his own. Is is there is there something about collegiate marksmen that makes them overpowered? Maybe. College Ooh, look okay. at this. Ultimate comes out, gets denied. Frozen uh, Tomb will be used by Skytech, but still gets caught out. Ryoma goes dominating, and that's another catch. The crucial one, engaged down for AoE. Yeah, now EDC can go ahead and start the Baron. That's all they need to do at this point to close things out. Sol is walking up, doesn't have the teleport yet, but is basically walking his way to mid, then to the Baron. Because now AoE, they have to do something here, but they don't have Skytech. Winnie. This would be a very tough steal to make. Sol gets caught out on the backside. Might be a redemption kill right now, but Soul's not even down. Smoothie looks for the knockup. Winnie tries to step away, but here comes Ryoma, Ryoma slain by Darkwings. Ooh, Ryoma, a little bit too ambitious on that engage. We'll pay for it, but Evil Geniuses, it's all right right now. They do have Baron. He goes a little too deep and gets punished for it, and that opening actually gives the opportunity for AoE to get more gold. They take down this tier two and are able to clear out another wave, and that's a thousand gold shutdown that came through from Ryoma. So. Not all is lost for the side of AoE, but we're still in a very difficult position for them. EGC still, at this point in the game, have a much easier time playing. And look at Rayoma. Even though he went in too deep now, now he has a stopwatch. A lot of these fights, um, he's been finding the angles alongside Smoothie. And now, oh, he made me a liar. He sold the stop. He undid the stopwatch purchase. Okay, he got it back. <laughs> so now he can go even crazier. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, he's, he's messing with you. I'm telling you, they're watching it. They're watching they it right are. now. How could you? I thought we were cool, man. We've never spoken before. Uh, Shaden uh, looking to uh, invade a little bit deep here, not too far off are uh, the rest of AoE. They kind of posture around this quadrant of the jungle, this red side of uh, AoE's jungle. Taking stock of uh, what's going on on the map right now, we still got a minute and 45 before the next dragon does spawn. Uh, a little closer to five minutes for the Baron. So not much to play around when it comes to the neutral game. It's more about the setup as we lead into that a little bit later on. But for uh, Evil Geniuses, they still hold a lead and they look to expand it as the dive coming out from Soul wants to find Dark Wings. We'll just go ahead and uh, retreat on back. Right, so Soul uses the flash, doesn't end up finding the kill. We'll see. Uh, rather, that could play a factor in these later fights. But ultimately, Baron buff being utilized very well by EGC. They're taking turrets, they're collecting more gold. This gold lead is starting to balloon up to about 3,000, almost four. And AOE starting to hang by a thread. We're seeing how these team fights are increasingly difficult for them. Even with links at three items, even with three items on Dark Wings, you can't keep EGC at arm's length. You can't play your comp the way you want to anymore because EGC are the ones now who are being decisive. And you can see it, another turret about to go down. And after this one, they can just go ahead and recall for the dragon. 
And Ryoma takes the chain of corruptions, uses the minion to get closer, puts the chains down onto AoE. A huge chunk on the Sky Tech. That's one of your engagers He's heading done. over to the respawn to heal right back up. And Evil Geniuses will pull the trigger to try and take them down. Immediately backing out, realizing they don't have enough left in this tank to make this dive successful. Not going to lose anything for it as they take the recall. Wow, okay. This is an opening for AoE. No one goes down. A lot of uh, summoners from Smoothie are out. Ultimate from Smoothie and Shaden out of the picture as well. Oh my god, they kill Ryoma. Okay. Woo. If that Still, arrow hit, he was down. Yeah, that 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 would have been crazy for AoE. It's still an opportunity for them if they want to actually go for it. But Winnie, he's doing so much work. Just simply clearing out the vision the yeah. AGC have set. Doesn't want to try his luck. But that's three mountain dragons for evil genius challengers. And that's so much resistances that Yuck. they've got in their back pocket. Like, it, it's going to be really hard. To, you're losing the value of the poke that AoE had with every dragon that comes through. If the soul comes through, it's over. Yeah, Shaden having all these mountain drakes makes him uh, a little bit more happier to dive than he's been before, and he's already been dive happy as it's been. I mean, the guy has died five times. Sure, it's not his best look so far, but it's not without cause. He's been dying to the continue these fights for evil geniuses most of the Late. time, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, but that, look at this. Soul will have to use the ultimate to try and get away. Skytech able to block it. Gets the Frozen Tomb onto him. Crowd control is there. And it's enough to even get a decimating smash onto Soul, denying him any way out of that. That's a nice catch out. Something I will say really quick, unrelated. We got to look at all the champion stats there for Rayoma. Uh, don't look, observers. Don't look at him. I, I want Eric to guess. Guess how much armor Rayoma has. And he only has basically the armor from Zanya's. Uh, I want to say, like, I don't know, 175? No. Higher. Higher? 250. 211. Oh, 211. <laughs> it's one armor item. And I'm pretty sure Zanya's gives you 45 armor. And, and, he, and it, these mountain drakes are ridiculous. And remember, the main damage sources from AoE, physical damage. So it's showing these drakes are making it impossible to kill Ryoma. Uh, and he's already three items deep. He has the uh, four items. Oh my God, excuse me. And one of those I is said, uh, uh, ROA. I said Soul would be GG for uh, EGC. Yep. I might have lied to you. I'm gonna keep it 100. You know what, it's all right. We might, we might be right. there. Sometimes, sometimes things transcends our expectations when it comes to NECL. Uh, honestly, that's most of the time. <laughs> we have some of the craziest <laughs> games here, Beat. Yeah, we do. Uh, Fly fam, they won a game. That was crazy. Yeah, they did. Well deserved one at that. Mm -hmm. Against TSM, and as we head over into our second series of the day, as this is uh, coming to its tail end, we're 32 minutes into this, so the death timers are getting longer. It feels like uh, Baron is going to be the next major objective for these teams to fight over, but uh, that'd be something significant now. Soul is still pushing over in that bottom lane. Right, Soul. I mean, it has the teleport, so continue beat, can continue being that side lane nuisance. No one can actually deal with him, not even Gamsu at this point. It takes multiple members constantly. So drawing that pressure is important because evil geniuses are now in a position where Ryoma, you can see him on the minimap, looking for flanks, hiding around in bushes, seeing who walks up a little too far. Oh, a catch out coming right now. Oh. Ooh, health too low. Ryoma's gonna go down. Wow. Winnie picks it up. That's a big one for AoE, but is it enough? Here comes Soul teleporting in right onto the back line. We'll take their heads and Gamsu still holding it though. Winnie jumps over, two tanky members to hold it, but they can't stop Soul from slaying Lynx. No more damage available for AoE. No more life available for AoE as Soul has taken it for his own. Evil Geniuses, they close out game two. They even out the series. They show us the signs of life we needed to see going into playoffs. And yeah, the objective bounties are up, but this is GG well played. Yeah, look at them death timers. You'll have Sky Tech back. Maybe you'll try some sort of last end cut through. But uh, Sky Tech, I don't think that's going to work out for him. Another next tower goes down. Evil Geniuses. It was a rough game, number one, but they're able to recompose themselves, and even with the slip-ups, the hiccups, doesn't matter. Evil Genius has got the skill, and they bring it for game number two. All right, and we wanted to see more activity again from the side of Evil Geniuses this game. And yeah, 
AoE were winning things out a lot early on. At the end of the day, evil geniuses were still being active, still making plays, especially when the advantage shifted over into their favor. And at that point, it was just fight after fight after fight. They're like, oh, you want to fight? Yeah, let's do that. I'm ready for that. And it was great to see. Mobility looks spectacular. Same thing with Soul. Soul has been someone who's uh, at least been a little bit on the low side in terms of uh, expectations being met, but that was a pretty good Yone game coming out of Soul to uh, set up a lot of these uh, small picks that Evil Geniuses were able to get and kind of run the tempo with. Right, so this could be something we see come, come playoffs for the side of Evil Geniuses Challengers. Who knows what else they'll be cooking up as they hope to continue to develop. Yeah, fun win coming out for Evil Geniuses to take this to a series and make this one one a piece. Our best of two. We are going to take a moment to throw it over to short break. When we return, we'll have an interview with one of the members of Evil Geniuses, so be sure to stay tuned. Welcome back to the Verizon post game interview. I'm joined with the ADC from Evil Geniuses Challengers. I've got Mobility with me. And mobility, my man. You've come That's into up. your own this split. It feels like there's been a lot of growth throughout a very long split, maybe a little bit tumultuous for you as well. It wasn't your starting spot in the beginning. You were a sub, but here you are at the end of the split. What's been your biggest takeaway so far? The kind of lesson learned? Uh, there's been a bunch. Uh, when I came in, I think I was really bad. I thought I was really good. <laughs> I came in and uh, about after the first week, I was like, okay, I'm not very good, but... I think uh, I've improved a lot since I've been here, thanks to all the staff and all the players here. And my biggest takeaway, I don't know, my biggest takeaway. Hmm. Uh, Is there anything in lane that you've really been like, oh, I was doing this wrong the whole time? Oh, everything. Or, like, everything? I mean, I, I, the whole, the whole I, book. I could go over, like, sit here for an hour and tell you everything I did wrong. Oh, I think, I think cool. like, my first scrim... I think like the takeaway they came out and they're like yeah this guy messed up every single thing possible in lane i was like all right it, it was pretty bad okay but okay i think uh yeah like i said I, i've improved a lot and i think my leaning and my all-around play is 10 times better than what it, what it was when i came in so i completely agree and uh speaking of we got to see a bit of a comeback from you guys from game number one which it was a pretty difficult game in its own right for you guys, and coming into game two, a little bit scrappy, but able to pull it out. What was the kind of conversation from game one to game two and how you executed? Mm, I don't know if there was much of a conversation. We kind of just went over draft mm. and what we wanted to fix for draft um, and just tried to stay as not tilted as possible. It's a good uh, point. Good point. Just come in with a clear head. You know, game one happened is what it is, and just play game two how we just try and win. Do okay. everything we can to win. Now, Smoothie is a pretty veteran voice. Obviously, I have Ryoma now as well, but I know Smoothie from conversations throughout the split has been a very influential voice on the team. How's it been like for you working with him and then kind of watching him work with the rest of the team as well? Yeah, it's been the biggest privilege to be able to play with him. He's obviously been a veteran for... A lot of years, old man. Um, <laughs> not kidding. Uh, he's definitely been in the league for a long time, and it's been very nice playing with him. When I came in, he's, he's been almost like a big brother for me. Uh, just when I need to hear it, he tells me when I'm playing bad. When I'm playing good, he lets me know that I'm playing good. Um, every single scrim, every single game, we're always bot reviewing together and always going over things, and he's always just... It's nice to just have somebody that just tells you what it is. Like, he's yeah. not... He, he doesn't hold anything back. He just lets me know, and I'm able to take that. I don't take it to heart anything he says. Um, so it's like a pretty. It's been a nice combo. It's been very fun. That's that winner's mindset, man. You gotta have that. It's so important. Now, do you guys do anything bonding wise? Are you guys hanging out a lot outside of the game? Uh, we went on a few road trips. Okay. Just okay. just driving around, um, talking and just not you know just driving around talking. Yeah. Hey, you can Spawning. find some beautiful drives around LA area. I, I know that for sure. Now, I do want to take a look ahead and maybe what you and Smoothie are going to be facing up against tomorrow in the last day of the regular season. It is TSM Challengers who is your challenger. Uh, do you have any thoughts maybe going against Neo? As today got a Penta in his game, even though they lost, uh, but a pretty strong start for them. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, I'm excited. You know, LCS player Neo. I know he's a good AD carry, and it'll be a good test. Should be fun. 
I'll have to one up him on the pentakill, so <laughs> let's go. That's what I like to hear. Now I have a personal question I'm gonna ask you. You can uh we can we can figure it out a little bit. Uh do you who's your favorite exotic animal or like what is your favorite exotic animal? Exotic? Yeah. Animal? Not not like a normal house cat, it has to be something exotic. Uh say a penguin. Oh, like that's penguins. a good one. Okay, okay, I like it. I like it. All right, I'll keep that one for later. Uh, I do want to give you a chance to shout out anybody you want to talk about or shout out here. Uh, yeah, like I said last time on the last interview, shout out to staff at EG for giving me this opportunity. Shout out to players, Smoothie especially with how much he's helped me. Um, shout out my family back home. Shout out my girlfriend. And yeah, shout out to fans. Awesome stuff. Shout out to you, Mobility. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, I am going to go ahead and send us to a small little break here while we get ready for our final series of the day. So don't go anywhere.